National March for Life presents the annual candlelight vigil for victims of abortion live from the Human Rights Monument in downtown Ottawa. Join us for the next hour of praise and worship, testimony and reflections from Father Mark Goring of the Companions of the Cross, Chris Stefanik from Real Life Catholic, Prudence Robertson from EWTN Pro-Life Weekly, David B. Wright of 40 Days for Life, the Sisters of Life, the University of Ottawa Students for Life, and Janet Morana from Priests for Life and Silent No More Awareness, and personal testimonies from those who know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Whether you join us in person or are watching our live stream, welcome to the 2022 Candlelight Vigil for the Victims of Abortion. As Psalms 139.14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My name is Kim Headley. And my name is Christian Agar, and we'll be your MCs for this evening. Well, tomorrow is our day to march and rally in, on Parliament Hill. Tonight, we gather to mourn and remember the lives lost to abortion and to also remember the healing that only Christ can give for those that have been wounded for abor by abortion and for the four million lives lost since abortion was legalized in Canada. You will hear moving testimonies and powerful reflections from members of the pro-life movement. You'll be reminded that we must continuously turn to our Lord throughout this struggle, whether it be, th whether it be through prayer or praise and worship music from the lovely sister duo Zafania and Sarah Gangle. On that note, I'd like to introduce CLC's David Cook, who is also a Baptist pastor, and he'll be opening the evening in prayer for us. Okay, good evening. Let's start with prayer. Oh Lord, how long will the blood of the innocent cry out to heaven for justice? How long will the leaders of our nation rage against your holy law? How long will the people of God remain silent and slumber in light of this enormous human rights tragedy? How long will we forget the mothers? How long will we forget your heart. Lord, stir up our hearts 
Lord, awaken our spirits. Convict us. Help us as a nation to repent, to turn once again to you, to open our hearts to the mothers, to the children, to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, David. While our hearts are heavy from the 4 million plus preborn babies who have lost their lives by abortion in Canada, let us celebrate those lives that we have snatched from the clutches of death. Maria Belvas led a highly successful 40 Days for Life campaign in Toronto, which ended just over a month ago. I'd like to invite Maria to share these victories with us. Wow, God is amazing. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here with you and to share what God has made. And also to actually invite you and uh, to continue with that flame of love, with that flame of life, that with that little candle that you have in front of you, God will light one, two, three, four hearts, 1,000 hearts, only he knows. At uh, as she was saying, uh, actually, God gave us the grace to lead a 40 days for life prayerful vigil. For those of you that probably are not familiar with it, uh, it's a 40 days, as the word says, of praying in, for, of, in front of an abortion facility. And uh, we have, as Matt told me, uh, we have the grace to actually revive this uh, campaign uh, in the Toronto area, which... Uh, wasn't that active, but by the grace of God, he actually gave us the opportunity to do it. So we were there praying. We actually uh, were uh, fasting as well, which we didn't do in previous campaigns, thanks be to God. There are some demons that can only be cast out with fasting. So that is a powerful weapon that sometimes with the prayer we can't do alone. And that's a big part of the 40 Days for Life campaign vigil. We actually, the majority of us were doing it and we, we got to the heart of God and God did his work. Nine lives were saved by his grace that we know of. Uh, one of them was actually at the beginning of our campaign when we get we're getting it all together we were praying we were actually asking for God to actually touch the hearts to touch the lives and someone actually called us and saying that she was actually decided to keep this baby she was actually in the streets she didn't have a place to go and uh, thank God we have the sisters of life here you will hear them after and uh, we got in touch with them, and by the grace of God, this woman is actually keeping her baby five months pregnant. She's in a shelter, and she is supported, and by the grace of God, she will carry this pregnancy to term. So that's one of the lives that actually were touched. The second life, actually, when that were second day of the 40 days, uh, this lady actually parked in front of the facility and she actually was very confused and she was actually looking for a sign and she found it. There was a volunteer outside holding a sign saying, pray to end abortion, here to help. And this woman actually was touched and she approached us. As you know, there is a buffer zone law here, a bubble zone that we need to respect. And we were respecting all that in the 40 days for life. We respect all, all the laws and we're very prayerful and respectful on all, of all that. Despite of that, she actually came and she said, I was looking for a sign. I found it. I'm keeping my baby. So thank God for that. And uh, little did we know that part of this 40 days for life, it's also community outreach. So Imagine a 12-year-old boy at 11 o'clock in the morning was passing by with his scooter in front of us. And there were actually one volunteer outside. So it doesn't matter. Norm numbers don't matter. As long as you're out there, 80% of the battle is already won. You're there. You're showing up. You're praying for that life. That boy, imagine. So he stopped. He looked up the sign. And he said, I have 30 cents. 
I want to support the cause. This lady looked at him, the volunteer, she looked at him and she said, do you believe in God? And he said, I do. And uh, that was the, the beginning of something that actually opened up the conversation. So it's not only babies that are saved here with our presence, with our prayers. It's any life. The boy actually ran out of his school because he was being bullied. He had no place to go. He, and he found comfort there. So we, we talked to him, and we told him that God loved him, that he matters, that he's worthy, you know, and he wanted to kill himself. He told us, he revealed that to us after in the conversation. So after we were talking, we, thankfully a, a priest came out and we were all there with him, and he felt very supported, and at the end, right before he left, he said, I will come back. I no longer feel that I want to kill myself. Thank you for being here. So those are the things, the little things that uh, by your presence, by your prayers, uh, not only in 40 days, you can actually get there. You can actually touch, uh, touch hearts. But this is an opportunity. The 40 days for life is an opportunity for you to be there. So thank you all for being here, for showing up. That's 80% of the battle is already won. And I invite you to be part of the 40 days for life locally so we can all together end abortion. God bless you. Thank you so much for that, Maria. Um, also involved in life-saving work of ministering to women facing crisis pregnancies are the Sisters for Life. And from the Sisters for Life, I'd like to introduce Sister Avelina. What a gift to be with each of you today to pray and to witness to the dignity of each human life. So I'm glad that Maria also said the same quote that I was gonna share with you today. Our founder, Cardinal O'Connor, was struck with praying with Mark chapter 9. The apostles were there with a boy and his father, and they couldn't cast a demon out from the little boy. They were able to do a lot of miracles, and they were able to do a lot of deliverances, but they couldn't do this one. Why not? And Jesus said to them, Some demons can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. And these words struck our founder to the heart. And he was convicted that no matter what other practical supports we give women in need, our foundation must be prayer. As sisters of life, prayer, our relationship with Jesus Christ, is the source from which we draw our strength to go into mission, to serve women who are pregnant and their unborn children, to give talks about the dignity of human life and to accompany women who have suffered the effects of abortion that they might find the healing mercy of God. Laura gave us permission to share her story tonight. So Laura was a single mother of three children when she found herself pregnant with number four. Overwhelmed and afraid, she chose what she felt was her only option at that time and she did choose abortion. This devastated her. And still reeling from this experience, a few years later, she found herself pregnant again. She was devastated a second time. What should she do? She could not imagine having another abortion, but she could also not imagine how it could be possible for her to choose life for her baby. And she was in agony about this flip-flopping from one choice to another choice. So she finally did go to an abortion clinic. She took the abortion pills. She went home with them, took them out of the package, held them in her hands, but she couldn't go through with it. And at that point, she made a choice for life. She didn't know what was gonna happen, but she knew this is not the decision that I want. And so she reached out to a group called I Regret My Abortion, and she shared her situation, not knowing if there is any help for her or what kind of help they could find for her, but one of our friends from that group saw her situation and connected her with us. Our sisters walked with her, speaking to her over the phone several times a week, visiting her home and daily praying for her. Laura herself is a very deeply prayer per prayerful person, and through this experience, she learned to lean on God in a new and radical way, and she searched the scriptures for God's promises, and she held on. God is faithful to his promises. And we saw this in Laura's life in an amazing way. 
uh, she not only gave birth to her beautiful baby girl, but she also, precisely through the opportunities that opened up because of this pregnancy, she went to school, finished school with a dean's honor roll, honor roll, and she also is now beginning the program to get her dream job to be a paramedic. And she also helps us in our mission to speak with other women um, contemplating abortion, encouraging them to trust in God that he will provide. So do not be afraid. In the pro-life movement, we will encounter opposition. And sometimes it could be violent, it could be unfair, it could be humiliating. But rejoice and be glad because you are in good company. Jesus Christ also faced opposition. And he died a humiliating death to give us life. And so rejoice and be glad, my, my brothers and sisters. Um, tomorrow we march for pregnant women and their unborn children. We also march for the many men and women who have suffered the effects of abortion. But tomorrow we also march for those who perpetuate the culture of death. Uh, we believe that by our prayers, our fasting, and our love, we can reach and touch their hearts. Dr. Bernard Nathanson was an abortionist who played a leading role in making abortion legal and acceptable in America. But through the witness of those praying peacefully outside of abortion clinics, he had a major change of heart and he became a major voice for life at the end of his life. He entered the Catholic Church, was baptized, and the person to prepare him for his first confession was Cardinal O'Connor, our founder. So some demons can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. So no matter what it looks like in the outside, we encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to believe in the power of prayer and that God is faithful to his promises. God bless you, and we are praying for you. Thank you, Sister Evelina. The theme for the 25th National March for Life is I Am. We asked a number of individuals who couldn't be with us today to reflect on what that theme means to them. You can listen to these testimonies. Hello to all of you up north at the Canada March for Life. I wanna thank you for standing up for the least among us through your witness at this beautiful event today. My name is Prudence Robertson and I'm the host of EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. We cover the top news on abortion and the cause for life, both here in America and across the world. I love the theme of this year's March, I Am, because it speaks to each and every unique human that exists from the moment we are conceived in our mother's womb. These words were first spoken by God thousands of years ago. We read in the Old Testament that God the Father spoke to Moses in the desert during a time when his people were suffering in bondage. Today, the bondage of abortion has imposed a literal death grip on millions of little boys and girls intended for this world. Both in Canada and the United States, abortion is currently legal up until the moment of birth. We've even seen many instances of infanticide, that is, babies being born alive after failed abortions and then left to die. What does this say about our modern culture? How tragic it is that the current leaders of our two nations choose to deny common decency and the basic science that proves the humanity of unborn babies in the womb. They turn a blind eye to people like us who plead with them to stop the senseless killing of the most innocent and weak the killing of those who don't have the power to speak for themselves. But we still have reason to hope because people like you and I will never stop our work to expose the evil of abortion because we know God has a plan to reveal himself to the world even in the midst of suffering and death. We remember how God the Son fulfilled the words of his Father in the New Testament, I am, by his very death on the cross and brought about victory and eternal life for all mankind. Greetings, friends, in the March for Life Canada. I'm Chris Stefanik from Real Life Catholic. I love the theme, I am. You know, all the Catholic Church's teachings about ethics, about the dignity of human life, it all comes back to who we believe that we are, that we are precious in the eyes of God. Like children who learn who they are by looking at their parents, not by looking in a mirror. We learn who we are by looking at the cross. I'm precious, I'm worth dying for, I have an incredible dignity that I can't even fathom because Almighty God, the Father, thinks that I am worth the life of God the Son. One Eucharist is my net worth. Guys, this sums up the basis for the entirety of the church's teaching about the dignity of life. We're not just picking fights with the world. We're saying, no, 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 God has placed us in the throne of dignity this high by showing us who we are in him. Don't you dare try to take people down. God bless you. I am honored to stand with you for life. 
Uh, I'd uh, like to introduce Ruth Robert, Campaign Life Coalition's Atlantic Canada Coordinator, who's traveled all the way from Newfoundland to be with us here tonight. Sorry about that, I'm a little bit short. <laughs> My name is Ruth Robert, and I'm really here to talk to you about persecution and spiritual warfare. So when I became a leader in the pro-life movement a few years ago, I started up a 40 Days for Life campaign in my city, which at the time was Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I got in contact with some local pro-life leaders, and I went to talk to them to get some advice and some contacts. And one of the number one things they told me was, you will be persecuted. You're so young. Do you know what that's like? They're going to call you names. They're going to spit at you. They're going to curse you. There'll be verbal daggers. There might even be some risk of losing job opportunities. Do you know what you're in for? And I would like to offer you the same perspective that I offered the man who was so concerned for me that day. I became a Christian in an underground church in the Middle East, in a Muslim country where they kill Christians. I was once, actually many times, threatened with death, but one time specifically when I was 13, that really forced me to examine my faith and decide if it was worth dying for. It was. I was once, th I was threatened with rape. My mother had to bribe people not to rape me because it was perfectly legal, in fact, to rape and kill young Christian girls. God was worth it. So I said to this man, I said, when I'm on the street, will they kill me? Will they put a gun to my head and say, recant your pro-life beliefs? I said, you know, it's possible, but it's unlikely. And even if they do, I'm just going to go to heaven and be with my God, so that's fine. They can't truly hurt me. But what they can do, and what they do do every day, is tear apart innocent babies in the womb. They're not killing me, but they're killing them. I cannot, in good conscience, stand back. Now, I won't pretend there isn't persecution in the West, and I won't even pretend that it's not, in many ways, just as difficult, but it's more insidious. In the Middle East, they, will, they might kill you. In the West, they give you enough rope to hang yourself with. They make it easy for you to just say, well, it's uncomfortable, and turn away. We do not have that luxury when children are dying. This is why it is a spiritual war. We need to put on the full armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the feet which bring the good news of the gospel. We need to have the sword of the word of God in our hands. And we need to pray, of course, for all the abortionists, for all the women, for all the men who are involved in this decision. But we must also pray for ourselves, that we will have courage that we will cleave to our God and know that he is stronger than any persecution. He will always provide for you. Don't worry about what, about what you will eat. Don't worry about what you will drink. If you are doing his work, if you are fighting for, to protect his children and his creation, he will provide for you. You will always be okay. Whatever bad thing happens to you, he will make it good. And if, in the unlikely event you die, you will go to be with him. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Instead, let pray for perfect love to fill up your heart and cast out all fear. And that perfect love is the love for the most innocent babies who have no one but you to stand for them. Do not let fear enter your heart. Fear is from Satan. Throw it out. It has no place in God's kingdom. And that is my message for you today. Keep praying, keep praying, and do not let fear stand in the way of you standing up for life. Thank you.
to grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, oh. You saw my condition, had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption. A price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand. I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with to wait. My heart needs a surgeon. My soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh. My heart has been in your sights long before my My soul found a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. mercy is always extended to us. It's never too late to choose life. Do the next right thing and approach God's love.
youth movement has many reasons to despair, we have even more reasons to hope. Thanks in part to the work being done by young people in their schools and on their campuses. I'd like to invite Brooke Delish from U Ottawa Students for Life who will share how she went from being pro-choice to pro-life. If you had told me a few years ago that I would become a pro-life activist, I'd say you're crazy. But here I am today. <laughs> Thank you. When I first went into high school, all I heard about abortion was, this is women's rights. This is essential to female empowerment. And I was like, yes, I can get on board with that. Female empowerment, of course. But I was never actually told how an abortion is conducted. I was never told about fetal development. I was never actually educated on the subject. Instead, I was fed lies complete lies that women need abortion. They do not. It wasn't until I started developing my Christian faith and was, you know, asked by the church members, you know, my thoughts on abortion that I realized, you know what, I actually can't really back up my pro-choice argument. So I had to do my own research. I did, you know, all the good Google stuff and figured out that the process of abortion is gruesome and cruel. And I also found out about the amazing, miraculous miracle that, you know, women can grow babies inside of them. Fetal development is just, it's so fascinating how it can happen. And so I started making that switch from a pro-choice to a pro-life stance in the middle of high school, which was very tricky and definitely faced a lot of opposition for it. But around that same time, I was blessed with some news that I was having, an, or a nephew was along the way. And throughout the whole pregnancy, his mom let me feel her belly and I could feel, you know, where his head was located. I could feel him kick. At six weeks, his heart started beating. His nose, ears, and mouth started to take shape. At 12 weeks, he could wiggle his toes and even get the hiccups. At 19 weeks, he had his senses, he could hear our voices, and at 24 weeks, he was viable outside of the womb. I had learned that all throughout his development, from the moment of conception, he was a miraculous, beautiful, and loved child made in the image of God. And I knew that I could not stand for something as terrible and cruel as abortion when it, it took the lives of innocent, beautiful children like my nephew. He still remains a blessing in my life today, and I'm so happy that the Lord opened my eyes and my heart to the truth of abortion. And I pray that anyone listening here today will also have their heart opened. Go out and do your own research if you are not educated on abortion. And I am so thankful that there is such a large group here today standing up for the unborn. The Lord is working, and some big changes are coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brooke. Her story is similar to mine. When I was in high school, I used to be pro-choice. I knew what an abortion was, ending a pregnancy, but I didn't know how they were performed or how developed a baby was at each point in the pregnancy. In my first semester at college, in my English class, our teacher had us make a video about anything we wanted to. A girl in my class made a video about human rights violations. She started it off with showing pictures of Holocaust victims, saying that it was horrible and evil, but was legal at the time. She then showed a picture of an aborted fetus. That was the first time I had ever seen abortion victim photography. I couldn't believe that was what an abortion actually looked like. Before seeing that, I thought it was just a clump of cells. That's the lie, That's the lie that we were told. I started to reevaluate my opinion on abortion, but not right away. So for several months, maybe even a year, that picture kept creeping into my mind. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I started to reevaluate my opinion on abortion. I considered myself pro-life. I occasionally pointed, posted on social media, but I still didn't get it. I was so excited for the movie Unplanned to come out, I saw it in theaters the very first night. When I saw what Abby saw, I cried for the rest of the movie. I then realized that there are no exceptions. Every abortion is murder. 
I thought to myself that I can't just have this opinion and not do anything about it. So I reached out to pro-life organizations in Toronto and they trained me on how to have effective conversations on how to change hearts and minds. And I will be interning with Campaign Life Coalition this summer. So if you're wondering if it's worth trying to change people's hearts and minds, it is. I'm evidence that it is possible. We can not only change the minds of pro-choicers, we can inspire them to take action. Unfortunately for far too many people, this conversation comes too late or it doesn't come at all. Countless men and women abort their children and are left with bitter regret that, and pain that comes with that decision. The Silent No More Awareness campaign seeks to bring these post-abortive men and women healing and an opportunity to help spare others from making that same mistake. It is an honor to be joined today by Janet Morana, all the way from the United States. She is the Executive Director of Priests for Life and the co-founder of the Silent No More Awareness campaign. Well, hello, Canada. Can we just raise our lights, please? Because we are the people of life. We have the victory over the culture of death because we are believers in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And we are in the Easter season, amen? amen. And I'm here with Angelina Steenstra. There she is. Uh, we have now brought the Silent No More Awareness campaign now for 18 years here in Canada, giving the stories of the men and the women, the mommies and the daddies, who bought the lie. And you know, because it was legal, they thought it was okay. Legality gave them permission, so to speak. But they have gone through healing deeply regret and their stories continue to this very day. I want you right now though, I'm gonna ask for a brief moment of silence because we have some women who are regional coordinators and women who have given testimony up in parliament but they're no longer with us, unfortunately. These Canadian women who were silent no more lost their battles with breast cancer and cervical cancer and other physical complications following their abortion. And so we're now I want to acknowledge Anita, Carolyn, Noel, and Francia. Can we just pause for a minute and remember them? And there's so many other women who have lost their lives because of this abortion here in Canada. So let's take a moment to remember them. And Lord, protect them, and may they be in your arms, Lord Jesus. You can find their testimonies, by the way, at abortiontestimony.com. But there's one more thing I want to share. I am a woman who lost a grandchild to abortion. Yes, one of my daughters, unbeknownst to me when she was away at college, had an abortion. She felt she didn't, couldn't turn to me because she didn't want to disappoint me. And since I shared my testimony and the shock waves of abortion that we have, so many grandparents have come to me and said, it happened to me too, I found out later. Well, thanks be to God, I've gone through a healing program with my daughter. But we also have to acknowledge the grandparents who are grieving because they bought the lie and they took their granddaughter I mean their granddaughter, their daughter for an abortion, so they aborted their grandchild. They were responsible. And so when we're praying here, we have to really pray for all those who've been touched by abortion. We've lost, you know, all those babies. For the death of every baby, there's been a mother who's been hurt, a father who's been hurt, grandparents who've been hurt, future siblings who are hurt. So many of you young people are standing here and you'll graduate maybe this year, but there'll be children who should have graduated with you. Aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews, all missing from the family tree. So we have to continue to pray for people's lives to be touched and their hearts to be opened to realize our goal here in Canada, like our goal is in America, like our goal is all over the world, to make abortion, whether it's legal or illegal, to make it unthinkable. Amen? Amen. So let's go forward, Canada. Tomorrow we are going to march and bring the light of Christ into the streets of Ottawa and shatter the darkness. God bless you. Thank you for that beautiful message, Janet. I'd now like to invite you to listen to another message from our live stream. Greetings, March for Life Canada. I am David B. Wright, the founder of 40 Days for Life and a broadcaster, speaker, strategist, and leadership mentor. When thinking about innocent children in the womb who are at risk of death by abortion, or mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy, or those suffering the pain and regret of a past abortion, or elderly people whose society sometimes views as a burden, 
I am committed to be a voice for the voiceless. Greetings, March for Life Canada. I'm Melissa Oden with the Abortion Survivors Network. I am an abortion survivor, contrary to what our culture that has been so inundated by abortion likes to say, abortion survivors very much do exist to the point that my team and I have now connected with nearly 600 abortion survivors from around the world, including Canada. Like you, I am standing for life day in and day out, and I am living with hope because of the efforts of people like you and me who are making the difference in lives of women like my biological mother and men like my biological father who needed resources and support in a time of need. And I have hope because of people like you and me who are making the difference in lives of children like me every single day. Keep up the fight, keep up the great work for women and men and children in need. Hello, March for Life Canada. I am Mike Aquilina of the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. I can say who I am and what I am because God made me in his image and likeness. All of the life I have is his gift to me, even the challenges, even the difficulties, for we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him. One thing I am is your neighbor. I believe that people in my country and yours have lost their sense of the gift, the givenness of life, and so many of them fall into despair when they suffer hardship and pain. Then they give up on life, either their own or their child's or their great-grandmother's. But that way is not sustainable for a society or a culture. You on the March for Life are showing the only true way forward, and I thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Like all of you, I am standing for life. Count on my prayers as you march. I'd now like to invite Father Mark Gore from St. Mary's Parish here in Ottawa to close our evening in prayer. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to all of you. Let's uh, call on the name of the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, your word says, whoever calls upon your name will be saved. Father in heaven, we're in Ottawa, the nation's capital. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you. Father, what you speak comes to be. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to speak peace into the hearts of your children now as they witness to you the life. Father, I ask you to speak joy. Let the power of your joy just become a revolution in this country, Lord. Let your spirit come with the fire of joy in our hearts now. And Father, I speak love. I ask you, Father, to speak your love into our hearts. Lord, bless your children now. Cover your children with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Father, that this blessing be a wall of fire around them and the glory within them, Lord. Lord, I pray that tonight and especially tomorrow on the march, your glory may be manifest, Lord. Lord, open the eyes of your people of your children to see their identity, their dignity, their authority, and their destiny. Father, have mercy on this country. Have mercy on your children, especially, Father. Have mercy on the children in the womb. And may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and remain with you forever. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Someone you don't know. Give someone a high five. Good night. Thank you, Father Mark Goring, and thank you again to all of our speakers this evening, those who submitted video reflections and everyone who helped out during behind the scenes. Shania Neely and all the youth committee members, Dunn Media, Armando Prini, thank you to Zavania and Sarah Gangle for leading us in praise and worship. They'll be returning to the stage momentarily. Thank you again to the Ottawa Police for your presence. Thank you to our National March for Life sponsors and donors who helped make this event happen. And a big thank you to Thank you for everyone for participating in this vigil. Please visit marchforlife.ca for more.
for more information about all the masses and services taking place tomorrow morning, which we encourage you to attend. Uh, there will be um, the rally beginning at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow, but we invite you to come sooner and hang out on the, the lawn of Parliament Hill. Uh, there's also going to be adoration of the Blessed Sacrament at St. Teresa's Parish just down the block from 10 p.m. till 12 p.m. Uh, and if you can't be with us tomorrow, feel free to check us out on at uh, CLC uh, Youth Pro Life. Uh, that's uh, all of our social medias where you can live stream the march. Uh, we wish you a happy evening, and we encourage you to continue to reflect on the tragedy of abortion and the healing that only Christ can offer. God bless you. Uh, as everyone's departing, if we can just ask that you put out your candles and lay them on the ground at the bottom of the stairs, and we'll collect them at the end of the night. Thank you. far from over and your journey's just begun tell your heart to beat again close your eyes and breathe it in let the shadows fall away step into the light of grace yesterday's a closing door you don't live there anymore say goodbye to Tell your heart to beat again Let every heart break And every scar Be a picture that reminds you Who has carried you this far Cause love sees farther Than you ever could In this moment heaven's working Everything shadows fall away step into the light of grace yesterday is a closing door you don't live there anymore say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again
I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For 25 years, the National March for Life has been the nation's premier pro-life event. I am choosing life for my baby. Uniting hundreds of thousands of Canadians in Ottawa and around the nation who stand for life while challenging our legislators to enact legal protection for Canada's most vulnerable. I am deserving of assisted living, not assisted death. On May 12th, Canadians will gather peacefully on Parliament Hill for a rally and march through the streets of Ottawa in defense of life at all stages. I am deserving of care until my natural end. The National March for Life. I am. I am. I am. I am. Because existence is always enough. <laughs>